Hello guys, so let's continue. Now I'm going to show you an example of uh, section 12.6. We continue talking about uh, proving triangle congruence, which in other words, and let's remember, that uh, proving triangle congruence is that I make sure that if I compare a pair of triangles, uh, all of, its, of their sides and uh, angles, corresponding sides and angles, uh, are congruent, which means they are the same. And we have different theorems by which we can prove that. We've talked about a side angle side, we've already talked about side side side, and this time I'm going to use an example where I use uh, S A S A or A A S. They are kind of similar. Remember that it's important to keep the, in mind the order. So if you, if you want to prove congruence of a pair of triangles by A, S, A, this segment has to be in between the corresponding congruent angles. If we want to prove A, A, S, it has to keep that order. So it means that the, um, the two angles are adjacent to one to the other and then the segment next to this angle is the one that uh, is congruent in the two. Uh, triangle. So in this case, I'm bringing you this exercise where we have this pair of triangles. This one is indicated for helping me explain in the exercise. So we have these two triangles, triangles EGF, EGF, and triangle HGD, HGD. So they are here, one, you know, uh, above the other, on top of the other, and we have to prove that these two triangles are congruent and the given information is this. They tell you that DG, segment DG and FG are congruent. It means DG and FG are congruent. And also they are telling you that angle E and angle H are also congruent. And with that information in mind, let's use our column, two column here, to prove that. So we might begin by analyzing, remember, we are going to use our, the mental picture of it, trying to rotate, translate, reflect, right? To see how these two triangles can be one corresponding to the other as for the segments and the angles. So I'm going to take angle uh, triangle <clears throat> HDG and I'm going to do this. I'm going to rotate it, right? and then I'm going to translate it here, okay? And this is what happens. I'm taking this and I'm putting it here. With that in mind, I can recognize corresponding angles and corresponding segments, and it's going to um, make things easier for me to do the, the proof. So let's begin. We can begin by stating the following. Can you see these two segments? We have FG and DG. So FG, and DG happen to be congruent, okay? <clears throat> and why can I say that? It's because it's part of the given. So the reason why I can say that is because it was a given, okay? So we can begin with something. We, we can begin with a segment, okay? Well, so we are in this uh, situation now. We have one segment, okay, now it seems like we need to go for two angles. Is it possible that this segment is in between the angles? Then it might be ASA. But if this segment is after the two corresponding congruent angles, then we're talking about AAS. So let's take a look at that. Now we know from the figure, part of the given is that angle E and angle H are corresponding and they happen to be congruent. So I can also say this, that the measure of angle E and the measure of angle H are the same, okay? And I can say that because it was a given, because they told me that the angles are congruent, all right? And with that in mind, I have one angle here. So it seems like I have one more angle to complete the congruence theorem. And I'm going to set this aside for a moment and I'm going to focus on the original figure or the original picture. And I can notice this here, a G. Can you notice that 
G is the intersection of two segments. And when we have two segments intersected or lines or rays, look at this. We have this angle right here and this angle right here. And they are, you remember, they are one in front of the other. They are opposite to each other. They are called vertical angles. So these angles, since they are vertical, they are congruent. So I can say, for example, that uh, the measure of angle EGF is congruent to the measure of angle um, HGD. HGD. So if these two are congruent because they are, and how or why can we say that? Because they are vertical angles. So now we have a segment and two angles. Let's see how the order goes here. Is the segment in between the angles? No. So it's not going to be ASA. Instead, it's going to be, look at this, angle, angle, and right immediately we have the, the side or the segment. So I can state this. The triangle Oh uh, yeah, we have, we have space here. Triangle EGF and triangle HGD are congruent, and I can state that because I am using the angle angle side congruence theorem, and I'm done. Thank you very much, guys.